सो नमस्ते एवरीवन हैदराबाद इंडिया एवरीवेयर इन द वर्ल्ड नमस्ते आई से नमस्ते बिकॉज नमस्ते इज समथिंग दैट कम्स विद माय ट्रेडिशन इंडिया एंड वेर एवर आई गॉन इन द वर्ल्ड आई हैव कैरी द टैग कॉट इंडिया एंड द लेटर आई बिकेम मिस यूनिवर्स और मिस वर्ल्ड डाइवर्सिटी लेटर because i believe being an indian you should be very proud of indian morals indian values and indian culture okay so let me introduce myself i am nas joshi and i am a human being i am telling this because i am a human being because a lot of people not just you many people identify me with my gender they say you are transgender they say words that i don't want to talk those words here those words are very 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 sad and hurtful and derogatory as well and such words do not define a human being well you all must be like especially parents when they must be expecting a baby they must have said oh god give us a baby child a baby girl or baby boy did anyone ask that god give us a trans child no one right but still we are born we are born out of you people only then why are we separated from our families why are we separated from all the things that a child needs the care the affection the love why only because we are born different then same case i would say especially able children they also born different but you people treat them you especially that for the especially able but transgenders no they aren't so let me take you back to my story one thing that i want to tell you before i start my story is that my story is about resilience my story is about hard work my story is about courage my story is about taking right decisions at the right time so 31st december 1984 I was born a boy who shall not be named here. Doctors they congratulated my family. They said, "Hey, you got a baby boy." My father, my mother, everybody in the family were very very happy. But their happiness could not last very long because while I was growing up, I was growing up as a feminine child. We in the society have you know barriers like you know have for example the kids. the male kid should only play with you know the cars and the female kid should only play with the dolls that's how we have all been accustomed in our society and i was the one who was playing with dolls you know irrespective whether i like playing with dolls or not my doll was snatched away from my parents all the time my dolls were always broken by them saying that this is not the boy's thing you know so our society has done it like you know this is boys thing and this is not boys thing why to do this a girl should do that you know fan uh, what happens next is that i was growing up as a very feminine child in my school everybody should dress me up as a paper doll and i would present it on the stage i always loved stage i would not like to you that i i don't love stage i love stage and uh, um, i like the uh, all the lights on me and all the spotlight on me i always loved that i loved makeup you know a lot as a child i would do my makeup of my mom sometimes wear her dupatta wrap around and make it a sari for myself but hardly i knew that this is a boy's thing because for me i was never a boy for me i was always a girl that was inside me it's the people who told me you are a boy it's the people who told me you are transgender the people who told me was like i don't want to use here you guys understand it very well anyways i was growing up i turned seven and i had a sibling he was just born first me and uh, my grandmother was very upset she said that the child the elder child my name was charu uh, he is already very very feminine i hope the second child the boy doesn't become like him so let's send him somewhere and it was not only her it was also decision of other people around my home my relatives my neighbors just to come and tell my parents 
hey, I hope your child is not kinder. You are hiding it from the society. You are hiding it from the family. They said, no. The only way for me to get protected by the kinder community was to send me away from Delhi. I was sent to my mama's place in Mumbai and that was a very small place and my dad had given him a lot of money to raise me up. Come to my shop, that when I go to Mumbai, I see that they are living in a very small shop, 16 by 16 shop and there were 8 kids with them already. And I was told, hey, you want to study, you have to uncle yourself. And they took me to Dhapa and they said, you have to wash your utensils here, you have to earn your uh, money for school and that's how you can go to school. So in the morning, I used to go to Dhaba, but you know, with me, it always been like my own people, my own people, my own relatives, my own, everything who can call my own, they disown me. But others, like especially people who I didn't even know, no connection at all, no blood connection at all, they were always mine. So this Dhaba man, was very kind to me. He said, you want to work, you work, you want to sit here idle, you sit here idle, you want to study, you study. But sometime I used to go, because our uh, place was in Film City, in Mumbai, and I used to go and sometimes I give, you know, uh, out of my curiosity, uh, maybe some film stars. So my first uh, what you can interaction with the camera industry happened at the age of seven. One fine day, at the age of eleven, I studied till the age of eleven, morning, uh, Thaba, afternoon school, evening coming back to the, to the super mommy, the cruel auntie and doing all the household work by myself. This continued till age of 11 and a very bad incident happened to me. What happened to me, I'm not going to tell you right now. That incident changed my life forever. In the morning, I wake up in the hospital. My mama comes and says, you're going to stay here for two days. I'm going to come and pick you up until time you stay here only. I said, fine enough. And I said, what happened to me? They said, you met with an accident. I said, okay. There was like glucose bottle and I was having pain all over. And I could not understand what happened to me because it, it, I was not in my conscious, you know. From there, he never came. He went and he never came. I was picked up by a senior committee and they told me your mama has given us the custody. From now on you are going to come with us and do the begging and clapping. They dressed me at the age of 11. So at the age of 11 they dressed me as a woman and took me to red lights to ask for begging and clapping. I never liked it because people used to you know put on their window shields and say sorry get lost. I never liked it. For one year I did it and my Guruma said, it's all money in the end of the day. You earn money, you're going to be stuck. Finally, one day I told my Guruma that I'm not going to do this. She took me to a dance bar. Another place, you know, worse than this. She took me to a dance bar and tells me, you dance here, you stay here, you do whatever you want to do. Now again, an angel comes to my life. The owner of the dance bar was very, very kind to me. He again said the same thing what my Dhaba guy said to me. But I wanted to dance because I liked girls dancing there. I liked you know, some of the people from the trans community dancing there. I liked it and I wanted to dance as well. And that was good money. So finally, I went to the dance bar and I kept dancing till the age of 18. But in this between, at the age of 14, I was really getting to teens and I got attracted to somebody, you know, and that somebody made physical contact with me and then I went back to my age of 11 and I got to know that I was molested, gang molested by my own cousin brothers because there was a party going on that time and they gave me something in cola to drink and I, was, I lost my conscience. That gave me a deep scar. Even till today, I have a deep scar inside my heart. I went into depression, totally depression. But I said, hey Nas, you need to study. You need to come up from all this. Comes age of 18, I met my cousin sister Viveka Babaji. I designed a costume for her, which she loved it. She went to a party and everybody said, it's beautiful. To that costume that I made, 
she got me enrolled in NIFT Delhi. I went to NIFT. I topped there with flying colors. One of the biggest reasons that I, fly, I topped there was I met a lot of people from my community who introduced me to other people. I got campus placement to two big designers of the country. But the one thing that came in my hurdle was my femininity. You know, that was my biggest, biggest big weakness at that time. People used to say, there was a time when I used to take orders from women. Now we have to take orders from a hijra, you know. And I got hurt. I said, my first job after NIFT is 25,000, and this is what I'm going to listen to. One fine day, I went to a bar. I met a girl. She was very good, glamorous. I went up to her and complimented her. I said, ma'am, you're looking very beautiful. Then when she spoke to me, she said, look, one day I was like you. I was, I was shocked because I have been asking God, please make me a woman. Next birth, please do a magic, do a magic van. Santa, please do a magic van. And she told me the destination. She told me, yes, she was also a transsexual woman. She has changed her gender and she was very beautiful. I got new hopes. But for new hopes, new beginnings, you need to work hard. You need to have, if you have a goal, you have to have even bigger aspiration and bigger hard work to achieve that. I had to earn 5 lakh rupees to for my surgery. I did, I did odd jobs and I got 5 lakh rupees. In those odd jobs, I met a photographer, fashion photographer called Rishi Taneja, who gave me my first break as a model. His pictures went viral. In 2013, I became India's first ever transgender showstopper. I said, this is not happening here. I want to go further. To my luck came the cover page of the Helka magazine. And I became the first ever India's trans cover model. I said again, no, this is not me. I have to do more. I started a small beauty pageant for women. I used to ask all the women to come and join me and I used to give them dreams to go to Mrs. Universe pageant. And that's what we did. One fine day, I got an offer from Miss United Nations. Would you like to come and represent your country? I said, I'm a trans. They said, sorry, we cannot let you in. Then I gave them an example of Miss Universe pageant that in 2014, they had said, if you have done your surgery and if you have female passport, you can come and join the pageant. So I started my first pageant journey in 2016. I got Miss United Nations ambassador title. Then I went to Singapore. I won. Miss Republic International Beauty Ambassador title. My first big title came in 2017 when I won Miss World Diversity 2017. <laughs> and to all you people, let me tell you something. I have never won a title with trans women. I have always won titles with cisgender women, natural born women. Imagine a trans girl standing and they're all trans, we're all like normal uh, born women, and I'm getting the crown. You can imagine the situation. <laughs> so I, I can imagine the situation as well. But imagine the femininity that I had maybe five years ago now became my strength. I used it to my maximum. I have been winning beauty pageants for the past seven years, and right now I'm Miss Universe Diversity 2022 and 2023. Well, this was about my pageant. I also have two babies, one baby boy and baby girl. And we all beauty queens say, we want to do something for our nation. We want to do something for children. We want to do something for this. But very few of us, we can do it. Like Sushmita did, she adopted two baby uh, girls. I have adopted one baby girl, and I have done surrogacy with one baby boy. So I've got two little children. One thing that I always teach them is that, listen, you need to respect person. You don't need to see whether they are mates, whether they are cleaners. I teach them to wish everybody a good morning. I teach them everybody to wish good night, you know, irrespective of their caste, creed, culture. Okay, in the end, it's not the end. As Priyanka Chopra once uh, launched a book saying, you know, I mean, it's not finished, unfinished. So my story is also unfinished. There are a lot of milestones that I want to achieve. I want to become Prime Minister one day because I feel if you want to be a change, be that change. If you want to see a change in your society, be that change because change is going to begin from you, not from anybody else. So I want to bring in 
capital punishment for rapes. I want to see everybody here not having Eve teasing. I want equal rights for women and trans women because I believe that trans women are also women and women understand trans women like any, not anybody before. And in my life, in my career, I have seen only women supporting me. Okay, coming to this, you all clap that I am, you know, Miss Universe, I am Miss World, I am this and that. But my mother, she was never ever happy with me. She always told me that she's born a baby boy, not a kinder. And that hurts me. Because what third person is saying to me, it doesn't hurt me. But in my mind, I always say, one day I shall make her proud. One day she'll say, my child is a trans girl, but still I'm very proud of her. My dad late dad said that I'm very, very proud of her. In the end, few things that I want to tell you, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, never say no, okay? Any opportunity comes your way, don't think, why should we do it? Why should we do it, you know? You have to grab that opportunity. In my life, I've always grabbed opportunities in my life because I wanted to see where these opportunities take me. Whether it was Rishi Tanija's bold photo shoots, whether it was me going to all the way to South Africa for a title, whether it was me adopting children. So, never say no. And it's never late in life. I'm right now 40 plus, but still I'm a beauty queen. You can be also whatever you want in whatever age. Age is not a barrier at all in your dreams. Lastly, respect everybody equally. If you want that respect for yourself, you need to give that respect to everybody because there is a saying that to give respect, you need to earn respect. And you need to earn respect not for yourself, not for your children, not for your family, but for the entire society. Let's make it one society. Let's not make it one community like a trans community or a hijra community or, you know, maybe specially able community. No. Let's come to a point. With the help of internet, we are one family now. Let's come to a point that we are one nation. We are one world. And we all have to come together, join hands, and make our future best for all of us. As theme was ripples, so I'm going to tell you that I made right decisions at the right time for my career, for my future. And today, that is why I'm here in Hyderabad addressing all of you. Thank you so very much. You've truly defied all the gender norms. And I'm sure each and every one of us sitting in this room is truly inspired by her.